I don't know if we covered it, but like, would you plan after wrestling go into it? I think I think uh, it's definitely on the. I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. I mean, it's, can't count it out. Can't count right? it out. No, uh, especially seeing what these guys are doing. They're going in there dominating, and so I think uh, I'm sure that UFC is going to be even bigger than it is now by then. And I think if uh, if my body's still <laughs> still able to go, I think definitely could see that you know mm-hmm. on the horizon for sure. Well, I saw you laid out, like, your whole timeline. Like, yeah. it was, like, a decade in the future, like, 2032 Olympic cycle. Yeah, so so basically I signed with Rudis about two, three months ago, and they gave me basically a timeline. And uh, Wow. They uh, pretty much put out, and they wanted to hear my goals, and, and it really challenged me mentally. Like, I had to really think then, and I was like, you know, I really want to do this for a long time, and I see myself wrestling past 32 Olympics, mm-hmm. maybe 36, like, it's it's definitely you know in the possibility, and I know that JB is wrestling really old. So if you know knock on wood, I can you know, keep going that long. I think there's no reason that I won't. Yeah, I did want to talk to you more about like how that opportunity came up for you because yeah. you are like by far the youngest. Like it was like yeah. when I saw that, I was like, holy cow! Yeah. Like how was that process for you? So basically, I had always went to Jeff Jordan wrestling camps, okay. which he was a big rudist. I'm pretty sure he's more one third of the owner. Or yeah, something like that, and so he's really big in Rudis, and uh, I always knew of Rudis, and I was always, you know, I always wore Rudis, big supporter and stuff, and so they just saw that I had a really good following, mm-hmm. and uh, basically they reached out and said, you know, they want to basically make history and uh, mm. make that deal go down, and that's a no-brainer. There's no <laughs> way I was turning that down. The biggest, I mean, really the biggest clothing company in wrestling, and uh, soon to do some big things, um, which which are on their plans, and it's just crazy that. I get to be a part of that, and with some of the guys that are on that, yeah. I mean, Snyder and, and, and some of these guys are just huge role models, and so it's cool to, to be a part of that team, and and uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to be you know, with them. Team Rudis is awesome. Now, I, I can go with this in a couple ways, but I'm just going to go on this way, on this path, path first, is do you think that you would be the first high school wrestler with their own Rudis shoe, own wrestling shoe? So, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but <laughs> I know that I'm not allowed a shoe until I believe I win an Olympic title. Oh, what? I believe I win an Olympic title or maybe senior See, world title. I believe, though, that I won't be doing any of that, you know, sure. until yeah, later, yeah, yeah. until I win the big stuff. That's, like, that's what, Rudis's Yeah, requirements. well, that's what I heard from so like, the brands. So basically they just said that they want you to be, make sure that you're, you know. Yeah. Legit. You're big time. <laughs> That's so. what I, I heard a, um, an interview with, like, the brands. Yeah. Like, they were saying, like, you don't get your own shoe. You don't earn it until you right. win Olympic gold. Right. Uh, but now, like, you know. There's not like everyone and their mom has their own shoe, but like there's a lot of different, yeah. whether it's any just random shoe companies. Which I think is great for the sure. sport. I think it's great. I think uh, Johnny putting out his shoes was great yeah. th- at this young. Yeah. I think that's great. A lot of guys are, you know, he has a huge following. And uh, I think for me though, I think uh, just, I'm just going to keep trying to build it. Mm. Just keep trying to build my following and hopefully one day I do accomplish that and then we can make the shoe and that would be pretty awesome. But it's cool. Like they already started like, helping me create a logo and mm. and uh, create my shoe already. And okay. I mean, we're so far off from that and, you know, God willing, I can I can get that done. But, you know, it's just cool to, to be mm. in the talks of that stuff. And uh, yeah, but none of that's happening until the big stuff. Yeah, so, that's sweet. Excited how, how, so how does the, like the whole NIL affect you even though you're in high school? Is that yeah. different than college? Um, so no, it's pretty much the same. Pennsylvania allowed it probably about a year ago today, it looks like, um, something like that, I'm pretty sure it was about a year ago, and and ever since then, since I really got the first NIL deal with Ice Barrel, it's just mm. skyrocketed. It skyrocketed, and uh, they've just been coming in a lot. And um, the rudest one was obviously the biggest deal. Sure, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same as college. Like mm. you get paid, and and uh, I mean, I know for me that I'm gonna be really smart with all that. I have a Roth IRA. Um, and I, I, I even like, I had all of that done. <laughs> That's so, so crazy. Yeah, yeah. So like, you probably had one before me. I just created. One. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I mean, my dad's really big yeah. on, on doing that type of stuff. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be saving all that and using it, I guess when a time in need, mm. uh, because you know, I, I got everything I need. It's not like I should spend it on something dumb. And so I just keep it all in there and, you know, let it build up over time. Mm. So That's crazy. Yeah. Dude, wait, but he, think about it like this. Okay. You're, a, what, a freshman? Yeah. <laughs> and you have 30,000 followers on Instagram, I think, or it was yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think about, like, what you were at at that point. Freshman year, I didn't, under, start, I didn't start making content. Yeah. I was. So, now, now, here's the thing. Like, 
I, I think I'm popular because I, you know, create entertaining wrestling videos. Right. Now, you as well create entertaining res- wrestling videos. It's different. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're good at wrestling. It's like, like you it's win like, world I do titles. Like, I, feel like, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I do the more, like, like your training stuff yeah, and, like, sure. you know, your stuff is more, like, literally sit down and watch a YouTube video for 20 minutes and sure. it's, like, entertaining all the sure. time. I'm, like, more, like, smaller clip stuff. I mm. might try to get into more of the YouTube stuff and, like, longer videos, but I'm just not sure yet. Maybe yeah. in the summer I, when I have I t- more time. I'll tell you what. Like, I have YouTube, okay, but I only post like matches. Once, or, or like, whatever. if you are gonna do it, I would just suggest have someone else film you, have someone yeah. else edit. Like, do not do that yourself because it takes up oh, dang I, near half of my time. Yeah, and um, I get going back to the NIL. Do those things ever take up too much of your time? And does it ever make wrestling seem more of a job instead of like a hobby? Well, this is what I love to do. Okay, so for me, it was just like basically like I guess just a bonus. I mean. Mm. I was just, I mean, I'm just trying to reach my goals and this stuff is coming with it. And it, I mean, it's great. It's, it's, I mean, I'm, every single time that I can do something like that, I have that opportunity, I'm going to take it. And uh, I don't think it really takes up much of the time because I mean, when I'm really handling that type of stuff is in school I mean, mm. really, I'll get my stuff done or, or study hall and whatever. And I'm just handling all that, sending emails or, or whatever. But I mean, really all the companies that I'm with are great. I mean, yeah. I, I film videos for them or I put out their stuff on my Social media's word mm-hmm. of mouth as well as big, and I mean, really, it's it's not too much of a hassle. Yeah. They make it easy, and I mean, they're all really great companies. That's awesome. So you like, have you ran a camp? Oh yeah, yes, we did camps. My first camp was to raise money for Worlds because okay. Worlds, um, I don't know if you know, but cadets is not paid for, oh. so it's it's a lot of money. And my whole family went, and so we ran a couple camps, and um, that paid for it. But that was when the camp started. And like now, like it's crazy. Like I put out, I'm doing camps, not really knowing if I get bites, but I'm going to like five different camps, five different states, and uh, we're running camps two days, one day, whatever, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, I know I have one in Austin, Texas. I know I'm going out to Florida, um, a bunch in Pennsylvania. I'll do a couple for Young Guns uh, with the littler guys, and I think it's just cool that I can do that and, and spread the knowledge at such a young age. It was cool because like back when I started wrestling, Spencer won his first world title. And he ran a camp to raise money for his, his oh, world okay. um, tour or whatever. And that's really where that, that sparked in my mind. That I want to do that someday. Thanks so much for watching this clip. If you want to watch the full podcast, click right here. Click it.